this departs now. And it's a nice jump by Cam Waters. Grabs a gear and holds the margin in towards turn one, but trying to close down on him is Mostert. They've jumped away. Randall has moved up nicely into third position. A good, clean start at the front of the pack, and Waters has got control over the top of the hill. Brilliant start by Cam Waters. Walked it off the line superbly and was able to capitalise on pole position, as you would expect. However, it's not over based on Chas Mostert being able to possibly find out the inside at six, but it's not quite close enough. Well done to hold him off. Good clean run through the first corner and the S's sequence at two, three, and then into four for the whole field. And already a nice little skip away margin for Cam Waters up and over the top of the hill. This is the viewpoint, J car driver's eye from Chas Mostert. He's feeding a second gear and Cam's gone wide down there at the final corner and he's gone right to the other side of the curving and that allows Mozzie to get down the inside oh, and a chance for the lead. Heingarten is out wide down at the back of the field as well. So a critical moment for Waters on a cold tyre. That's an unforced error by Cam. He'll be dirty with himself. Here's the replay. So a nice jump away, great reaction for Waters and they've both walked it off the line nicely down into turn one. Good point from Waters' car. A little bogged down for Chaz, wasn't it? Just a tiny bit. Yeah. And the other guy that got a great start was Thomas Randall. He actually made ground on both of them. He's still got that third position over Will Brown at the moment. And here's what happened. So Waters ran wide, had to go round the back of the kerb, but that was enough for Chaz to be able to sneak down the inside, who fed it second gear at that point to punch out the other side. When he's... Here's the onboard that we were with at the time, and you can see that Waters turned it in and disconnected. He had to catch the slide. Uh -oh. oh, and there's Jack LeBrock with drama on the way out of got, turn six. Oh, this is not good, and they've already had a difficult weekend on Friday with this car. And look out, we're mobile again, so that's good. Yeah, mate. Okay, so there was there's more to it. It wasn't mechanical, it was actually contact. So I heard in the background Tom Moore, the engineer, he's alongside George Commons at Erebus. And so there was a rough up between he and Nick Perkat down here at turn six. Nick's in the Bendix car down the inside, and Jack LeBrock on the outside, and has ended up being rotated down there. Of the way the cars feel sometimes when you first go out there. When they put two cold ones on with two warm tyres on the other side, that's, it's going to have a, a bit of evil in it for a lap or two until everything starts to warm up. Yeah, they track around the linearity of the brakes, for instance, is the worst part straight away. And the cars tend to pull under brakes. Brody Kostecki now coming in. And remember your point about what they did with him yesterday. Oh, go up straight in. So there's a serious problem. Now that's really weird because he'd made ground and was very fast. And this is looking competitive, so that's not good news. So also in the lane we've got James Golding just departing in behind James Courtney. So I didn't see that one coming uh, with Brody. That's a shame. He was in a solid position out there. The margin, by the way, at the front's just opened ever so slightly. Have a look at the tone there. It's nearly 1.6 seconds now as the boys depart the lane. So something in the under the bonnet, the fire and thunder department there that they're looking at. If Mostert and Co take two tyres, so Mostert borders Randall, and that gap from Mostert back to Will Brown is the same number as I said before, 6.7 seconds. So he hasn't really lost any ground in the last four or five laps, and Mostert in. So that's a big call. So the opening gambit, the opening look at what goes on here is going to be really important. I think Thomas Randall went with him. Yeah, that leaves Cam Waters in control. 1.6 well, seconds was the gap so between the two leaders. So what does he do here, tyre-wise? On the money, mate. On the money. Very it's good. going to be four. They're doing all four. So yep. they've gone the other way to yesterday. Oh, so come down the lane. Come down the Behind this car. Behind this car. Okay, go, go, go. Oh, sorry, mate. Jesus. Oh, no. oh, they're looking at me. I'm just watching them go past. They're actually rubbing nose to tail. So you see there, Mostert, four tyres. 
good play by him out in front because if you look at the gaps, guys, Scafie, you just talking about what do you do? Look at all those gaps, 1.5, two seconds, two and a half, three seconds. They're all the difference between two tie stop and a four tie stop. I don't really think it's an option for many of the players in the top six now to do anything other than two ties. I totally agree, Larko, and that's what it's done. It's played the others in. The only way to beat Mostert today is to do something different and get track position and be able to lead. Brady Kostecki, it's really been not the weekend you wanted to come back home in Perth. I mean, I suppose we take the silver lining, the car has been fast today. Yeah, it was great today. Um, you know, George and, and um, everyone on the 99 side worked, you know, really hard to, um, you know, chase some pace. We were horrible yesterday, horrible Friday, and uh, finally looked like we started to have a little bit of a direction then, and um, sort of just, you know, tried to manage my tyres a little bit, and uh, was able to catch Will. He was pushing pretty hard behind Tom, and um, it just started laying over. So, yeah, that's... Uh, Quite unfortunate, but um, yeah, we'll just see what happens. Thanks, Brady. Appreciate yes, it. Thanks. Critical stop this one. Sorry. Waters is in. <laughs> They're doing four. <laughs> and under investigation, an unsafe release for Chaz oh, Mostert. And that's what I was concerned about when I saw all that stuff going on before. Meantime, new fastest lap by Mostert, 55.6. So, massive confusion in that departure on that stop of drop in behind, drop in behind, drop in behind, but he was in front and then pressed on with it. And they're all the little procedural things that teams work very hard on to try and manage, but in the heat of battle, it's very easy to end up in a scrambled scenario. Now, this, will, this will be really important. Does he actually have the brake? Do the brake lights come on? Yeah, a little bit, a little bit, just a little bit. But again, hard to tell because you're not standing right near it. Race control attention all teams. The stewards have imposed a five second time penalty to car 25 for a pit lane infringement. There we go. So that's a big, big story. Little game change has just been played into the middle of all this. We talked about the fact that this was potentially going to be pretty lively today, and that's exactly what's going down. So we just looked at the data. He had to slow 37 k's. So he just ran, ran, just had to slow it just a little bit. Courtney, wild wide down there at turn seven, comes back on in front of Bryce Fullwood. Have a look at this angry bunch of cars down here at turn one. This is worth a fight for these guys, for the fellow that we're looking at, he's our championship leader and he's been slowly but surely extending his championship lead for Thomas Randall. Last podium for him was in Adelaide at the back end of last year, so he's not had one so far this season. He'd be pretty keen to get some glory this afternoon and he's going to fight for it. He doesn't call oh, the two of them make awkward contact down the bottom there and a lock up for Will that could hurt those tyres. He had to really squeeze the brake in order to be able to deal with that. So this will fire up now as they make their run down towards the bottom. Randall covers down the inside. Makes Brown go the long way down here at the final corner. And Will will be looking to try and he's given him a little nudge and all oh, that might actually end up raising the eyebrows up in race control because that looked like nose to tail contact. Now, for sure Thomas was blocking him, but there was absolutely nose to tail contact there and ended up escorting him off the road. The damage on the back of the car, you can see. He didn't get the braking area shot from the front on, so it's hard to tell whether Thomas moved the car under brakes or not. He's getting another, He's getting another fix up here at the moment with Anton. So they'll study that in debrief. Pull it apart, try and make sure that procedurally that doesn't happen again. But that was awkward, but it's part of the pressure. It's so much harder in reality for everybody up and down the slow to manage that stuff, and that's why we see it from time to time. So we're now inside one lap remaining for the checkered flag, and even though this fellow is going to cross the line first, he is not going to be our winner this afternoon. So great speed though, and a great turnaround pace-wise for Chaz Mostert and for Ryan Wood after their test at Winton. Up and over the hill for the final time. 
but it's going to be Cam Waters that gets the job done. Into the final corner. Monster Energy Mustang. And this is what Cam Waters has been looking for all season, and he takes the gold this afternoon in Western Australia. Fuck yes, good job, boys. So proud of you guys. Excellent drive by Cam Waters there. Out the right yeah. Good job, mate. For Ford. Will Brown, that number, has been able to get away with it to Davison by six seconds, so he's going to prevail on the podium by a second, effectively. Yeah, so uh, ended up being 2.4 seconds, the margin between the buddies, between Mostert and Waters in the final yeah, analysis no, 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 there. Don't, don't, don't worry about that, mate.